Hello. Look at that thing up there. Ain't that nice? So it's a beautiful day today. We got a respite from the rain, finally. And so I thought I'd take my Mopars out and play with them today some. So I've been having a work session on this Chrysler again. And what I did today was I installed all my washer, windshield washer, accoutrement, the pump that I fixed or unloosened or unstuck or whatever you want to call it, my new bottle. Original lines back up here and the junction's new. Original lines all the way over here and all that. So it's working fine. And I went ahead and I had forgotten to hook up my turn signal repeaters for the fender well, fender tops up there. So I did that. They're working good. I had to mess around with a selection of flasher units because for whatever reason, this thing was hyper flashing. You turn the turn signals on, they just go blink, 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 blink. So I went in and got my, I have literally a, one of those little small drawers, one of these plastic storage things in there, and I had them full of uh, flasher units, so I just started trying different ones until I got one that worked good, worked like it should, so it was the same number as the rest of them. I don't know what the deal was, except it said heavy duty on it. It has to do with the number of lamps on it, because these things, you know, they're bimetallic, and all it is, it heats up, and it separates and closes and separates and closes and separates, and it's all based on the load on it. So this one has one, two, three, four lamps on each side that light up, so I don't know. I guess they were just not capable of supporting four lamps. But either way, they're all working now. Everything's good there, so I've turned my attention to this... Uh, situation under here I have another encounter on one of these old obsolete reverse light switches that I don't like at all on these these are the ones that mount to the steering column just like a lot of GMs and stuff back in the day did and it works good it's fine and this one actually works but the uh, it sounded like something was not was dragging the when I would hook it up it was unhooked like you see the plug to it's there and the unit itself is there and it was hanging there like that and I tried plugging it in and it made something click under here and made the amp meter go down so something was not right there so I pulled off this panel big nice genuine metal panel here not worried about crash protection there and looked at this and look what I found someone has had either someone has had the steering column down or Chrysler did this it would not surprise me of either either possibility sorry but they have the pinch the wire between the steering column and the dash frame so I don't know if it's possibly shorted in there or broken or what but I got to take that loose and see what's up with that that wire is not supposed to be like that so screws look like they've been out of this thing so I don't know so I may have been in here you know how it goes amateur hour so anyway that switch is just a little bit different I noticed than the ones for the other ones that the other ones have a pigtail on them. that one does not but I think it generally works the same but I'm not messing with it because I did test it in my meter and it does establish continuity when you put it in reverse so it's apparently it's adjusted right it's working so now we got to just deal with the wiring and see if the bulbs are good and we should be able to get our backup lights working again we hope okay there's your short circuit Let's see right here let the camera try to focus it was caught under that bracket and it cut right through the insulation that's on the feed side of the lights the purple the violet wire is the that the power supply to the switch and this is the power out and it's short bigger than nothing there I don't know how to blow the fuse this thing may not be fused that way because this actually may have a circuit breaker because the way it works is this wire I don't know if you'll be able to see anything in here but that wire goes right up there 
that's it wrapped up and you see it splits right there it goes I don't know what y'all are seeing there but let me back out a little bit but uh, the one that splits to the right right there with the connector that goes back to the lights and then the side this left side there goes right into the back of the wiper switch so I think the wipers got a circuit breaker on them so that's probably what was doing that when I pl try to I'd plug it in and put it in reverse it'd go click click so Anyway, I'm going to wrap that with tape, and then we'll see if this will bring the lights back into operation. And that looks like that's been done a very, very long time. So I think you have the folks, fine folks at Lynch, uh, not Lynch Road, but New York Assembly, to blame for that one. <sighs> well, boy, America was great even back then, weren't they? <laughs> I ate then, so I'll try the lights. We'll see what happens here. I'll wrap that with some tape first. Whee! Well, this very well may be the only time you hear somebody say something like this on YouTube, but this steering wheel smells almost exactly like vomit. I kept wondering what I was smelling when I was in here working on this car and uh, I'd smell it when I'd lean up and sure enough I put my nose up here and sniff it smells it's really probably about 75% vomit and 25% number two type of an odor and it's not that bad I don't really smell it unless like I said I'm kind of close to it but uh, yeah either way I'm not really crazy about that but there's nothing you can do about it you just have to live with it it's interesting how things as they age, they emit different kinds of odors. What's up guys? So I'm doing something that may be a little controversial here and I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the wind. It's up blowing again today like it always does. So uh, I'm on this 68 Plymouth again. I'm just kind of tending to some more details and things like that trying to get it a little bit more presentable and part of that is dealing with some door panels and this car normally has gold door panels in it I'll show you what was originally in it it's like these back here and uh, they have seen better days so especially the front ones this one they didn't have one here it, so I had the remains of it but I'll show you here in a second what kind of shape it's in and so the 73, the green 73 point of value, and I saved a lot of stuff out of it. I saved the doors and all kinds of little bits and pieces. So I decided today that I was going to just go ahead and swap on these green door panels. And it does look a little unusual, but at least I have door panels now. This thing was missing. The panel was off of it. The water barrier was gone from in it. Didn't have an armrest. Didn't have anything here. It was all like Uncle Phil says. It was all gone. So. I suspected that between 1973 back to 67 to 68 that Chrysler was going to be too cheap to change the doors appreciably. So I figured these would fit, and they do. They fit right on, and I'll show you what it took to get them put on. Walk over and look. Take a look at this one up front here. We've got this one off. And this was kind of what shape the, the water barrier has been in. They're, they're okay themselves, but they're taped at the bottom and they took them into a little channel right here. And this one had pulled out, tape had failed and it had pulled out and it had got the bottom of the door panel wet. And so the backing board was really no good in it. And before we walk in, I'm gonna also mention that, let's see something I can replace right there. Got a good one over there. Uh, I'm just going to say that I'm going to probably transfer over those weather strips because the ones off the 73, I think that car were garaged, was garaged in very good shape. So they're kind of glued and held in by little bits and pieces of things to, to keep them in here, but they will come off. And these are, uh, these are bad. They're in bad shape. So I think they will, the doors are the same, the body's the same, I think they'll fit right on. So we're going to do that. In the meantime, There's a door I pulled this thing off of. I want to show you here, this is the backings of the two door panels. That's the original 
68 passenger side this is a 73 passenger side and these were both produced at Lyons trim plant and they have markings on the back of them this one says Chrysler Corp November 22nd 1967 Lyons trim plant 4098 Lyons Michigan this one says sort of a version of the same thing it just says Lyons trim September 13th 1972 and Really, all that Chrysler did is they changed some of the, they just cheapened things up, as always, but they changed a couple of the trim, the uh, retainers right here, but these all three are different, and these have the wire type. But really, all they did was, they didn't change the door itself any, they left all the holes there, but they just left out some of the, they just left out some of the retainer clips on purpose. You see that this one got through, through the bottom. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And this one has one, two, three, four. Still has two up the side like that one does. That one has, this one has uh, two. That one has one. That one is held in by a strip, a separate strip across the top of the door panel. And this is just pops in with no strip. So, you know, it's the way it goes, I guess, progress, but that's what I'm working on today. Got all my Kutra Ma here, all this transfers over, it's all the same. So, uh, like I said, you know, it looks a little strange, and if I find a set of gold door panels, I really, essentially, I just have one usable door panel. Yeah, let me show you this. You think we're gonna be able to use that again? <laughs> no. So, it's a gun. Another thing too, maybe I'll look out and find some nice person that's got some of these for sale, but they're kind of hard to come by now, especially four doors. So, they, might, they repop the two doors, but they don't do the four doors. So it's gonna be expensive, and this is just not in the budget to do that on this time, at this time. Show you one other thing too. A little bit more detail under the hood. Got my washer bottle on that didn't fit correctly. And I got my air cleaner decals. It took me a month to get this thing. And I ordered that on the 21st of January. And I got an email the 24th of January that said that they had it. It was awaiting shipment. So all the email said, and then I never heard another thing from these folks. They're called Mr. Moparts. I never heard another word from them until I had to call them, I had to email them rather, ask them where my sticker was. So finally, after about three more days, they responded to my email and said, it's just some terse email that's when somebody's emailing and they don't really want to talk to you, but they have to. So they just kind of rush, rush it. They said, uh, they said, stock has been off. I will have out Monday, we'll send you a tracking number. No punctuation in any of that. So it took from Monday till Friday to get it here this week. So I'm too happy with them. I know people probably think I complain a lot, but it's not so much I like to complain, but I like to point out when something's deficient, I like to point it out. So in the future, if anybody's wanting to know how good or bad something or somebody or someplace is, now you know. So. I, I would reserve judgment. I wouldn't reserve judgment on them, I guess, but I would. Uh, I would put Mr. Moparts down the list of people I'd order parts from right now. I'm too happy with the customer service. I right, so I'm going to plug along, guys, and get some more door panels put on. See you, bye. Hey guys, uh, doing a little more to work on this dart today. I thought I would get into this interior and try to get the seats out and get the carpet out and start trying to clean this up. So. Before we walk over there, I've got my mask on, but I've got it pulled down so you can actually understand me. And I'm just going to give you a quick look at what was under the seat and what is in the seats and stuff like that. And I'm going to tell you now, if you have a weak stomach or you, you just don't like looking at stuff like this or it makes you sick, it even makes me sick. But if you don't like any of this, don't watch because it's pretty nasty in here. So you've had fair warning. 
So if you puke after seeing this, it's not my fault. But anyway, let's go take a look at this. I'm gonna have to put my mask back up so I'm gonna end up sounding like Charlie Brown's teacher again. So we got the front and the rear seats out of it. And there's a little bit of a mystery about these seats. Uh, we'll look at them first. Of course, there's a big lot of nest under the front when I expected that. And then back here, look at this mess. That's packed under the back. That's the bottom seat cushion there. Yep. Time for the tongue again. So here's the mystery about this. Several of you guys... Hope I can stand far enough away I can pull my mask away a little bit. But several of you guys mentioned that these look like Valari seat covers, and I don't doubt that. Um, I think what may have happened with this car is somebody had the seats recovered with these Valari covers or Aspen cut seat covers. Because I think the seat structure is actually the Dodge seat structure that goes in there. But they've got different covers on them, I think. I'm not 100% sure about this because... What makes me, leads me to believe that is that they mount in the same places and it looks like this is actually the real seat for the rear because if we come out here and look, I found the remnant of the bill seat. And we get over to this and I looked at this sequential number. This one has 1913 on it. That's the, uh, I can see B1913 is there. And that's actually, that matches the car's VIN number. So this seat, I think these seats are actually the Dodge seats. I don't think they've just been recovered at some point. So, I don't know. I'll try to dig that out. Dodge Main always usually put there in the back of the, well, yeah, in the back of the seats like that. Uh, there may be another one on the bottom cushion, but if it's in there, it's probably destroyed. And I don't see any other one in here but look at inside of this thing oh boy if there's one saving grace in all this mess is that the uh, seat covers I mean the seat belts appear to be good still they're not chewed but up here this is why all this had to come out this ain't nowhere near clean at all we come up here I'm gonna put my mask back up but you got more remnants of nesting couple pieces of material looks like we got this thing is so nasty I had to actually wash my gloves before going in the house uh, it's got some shell automatic transmission fluid it's old enough that it doesn't say Dexron 3 on it I don't know how old that is at least it's plastic that'll clean up or else I'd pitch that out let's see what this is here look at this before I Ramon Littrell Lumber Company, Florence, Alabama, manufacturers of dressed pine and hardwood lumber, two bags of cement. Yeah, it's nothing to me. But I see some kind of insects kind of crawling around in here. It's not a good sign. And Over here we have the carcass of an umbrella and a couple tools. That's good. We'll wash the tools up, disinfect them. Nippers. Excellent. And yeah, a pair of channel locks or just pliers, I guess. I don't know what to call these things exactly. Is it made in USA? Yeah. Hey, check that out. Craftsman. Good. Got a good Bud Light, empty Bud Light container. I get the impression that this guy, this nephew, this is the one that wrecked it. And I don't, he wasn't a young man either, but I get the impression that he did not care as much for this car as his aunt and uncle did. It has the trusser seat belts. These are exactly the same seat belts as my 68 Plymouth has, except it's missing these things. 
and uh, this one in the back also I notice hope you can hear me this one has front and rear seat belts and the 68 Plymouth has what? the 68 Plymouth has American Safety is the name on those alright guys well no, it's hard to breathe in this mask. I have to take it off every once in a while, but we go ahead and keep on working. Somebody asked me the mileage on this car, I think. And the mileage appears to be 68,947 miles, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's original because there's not much wear on this thing at all. Carpet's not worn or anything, so. Okay, I gotta get some fresh air before I start gagging. So. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll do a little bit more on this. Nice view of the roof. <laughs> yeah. Alright, guys. Thanks again, and what do I add to this? I got my mask on again. All right, you know what this means? Time for the brush. Jeez. Okay, we're back out here at the dart, and here's the long and the short of it. One of my worst nightmares has come true again, unfortunately. Um, when I bought this car, I was in such a rush that I didn't really inspect it very closely. So I was just, you know, I was just in a hurry to get out of there because I didn't know if I had competition or not. And so that was that. And the guy swore up down and he said, this car, I, said, I had it run a few months ago and all this and blah, blah. Well, the, the long and the short of it is, is that the engine is stuck. How bad it's stuck, I don't know. And that's unusual for this part of the country because we just don't, we have a lot of humidity, but we don't normally have... I guess the salty, moist air that there is up north, which tends to really stick them. So I got my borescope out and looked in the cylinders, and on all the cylinders that I can see the cylinder wall on, which was about six of them, all I see is nice shiny cylinder wall. So 
you know, I, I was afraid that maybe one of the head gaskets, one or both of the head gaskets might have started seeping and rusted up the cylinders because these things have, if it's original, which I'm assuming it is, then it's got a steel shim head gasket and those can, over many years, those can rust away, you know, like anything else. But I didn't see any evidence of that. Um, I've not tried to un turn it very much because I'm afraid that it's going to bend some push rods if I do that. And I'll tell you why, and I'll tell you what I think is going on with it. This thing has reeked of rotten gas, stale gas, terribly all over the car, like at the back, by the gas tank, in the gas tank, in the car, under here. And when I pulled the dipstick out, to check the oil, the oil's clean, like it's just been changed, because I think it has just been changed, you know, and not been run. But it stinks like terrible of rotten gas, stale gas in the, in the oil too. And the carburetor's off of it, and the carburetor, when I took it off, it was not stuck. It's not rusty, not stuck. There's nothing stuck on the ex external of the engine. Like the alternator and anything that turns, it's, it's, it's turning, so it's not that. But the carburetor, when I looked at the bottom of the carburetor, of course it smelled awful also, but it had uh, just gelatinous, that varnished old gas had dripped off the throttle plates like it had been flooding badly. And so I'm trying to, I'm trying to kind of get an idea of what's went on with it. Uh, the worst case is that somebody had it running and they seized it up because of no oil or they run it hot or something like that. And that's that. That's, if that's the case, it's over for this engine. But what I think has happened is somebody at some point maybe tried to get it running. Or the last time it was running, many years ago, whenever, they ran a whole bunch of stale gas into it from the gas tank. And it probably stuck the valves and got down and if the carburetor flooded real bad it probably flooded it into the cylinders because I see this tar looking stuff on the spark plugs when I was looking at the uh, took the plugs out around this perimeter of the spark plugs it looks like old gas and it smells like old gas so I think the cylinders are varnished up with old old gas so long story short uh, I think there's a chance of getting it to, to unstick I don't think it's the same situation as that other car over there which was fatal <laughs> so anyway that said that time again even though magic potion failed me last time i've whipped up another batch of magic potion which is it's not magic or any type it's just i took one of my unneeded bottles of transmission fluid because it's some kind of it's for a mazda and i don't have a mazda anymore I'm not going to have one anytime soon that i know of so I just got this stuff sitting around so I paid money for this, so I need to use it. So I drained half of the bottle of this out in a receptacle, and then I filled up the next, the remaining half of the bottle with acetone. Everybody on the internet swears that this will unseize them. So we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna, today is a Wednesday. I think it's the 20, like the 27th of February, something like that. So I'm gonna put this in, I'm gonna fill the cylinders up and at least get the, over the pistons and then, uh, we're gonna let it sit to sometime on the weekend and then I'll probably pull if the rain's not if it's not raining I'm probably gonna go ahead and pull the valve covers off pull the rocker arms off so that I'm not trying to fight a stuck valve or three or four and uh, see if we can get this thing to turn over finally because this guy I don't know what he, I'm not sure what he did you know he told me a whack I'm sure he did because you know, it's it's a cheap old car, and it is what it is. I'm not upset about it. It's to be expected. But you know, it's he he got in it and turned the key. And of course, the battery's dead, and it wouldn't do anything. And he said, "Oh, the battery's dead." And he said, "I wanted to run it so you could see." How, I mean, I've got that on a text message. I don't understand why he would go to such lengths to tell something that's not true. But this car is not the way I look at it. This thing is not running in a long time. As a matter of fact, it looks a whole lot more like the last time it's run is when it was put away 20 years ago so I mean the carburetor had was junked up didn't look like it ever had gas in it any time recently you know and I don't this is understand you know what he was trying to pull on me 
But it's got a new starter on it. It's got a new mini starter. It's got a new oil filter. It's got a new battery three years ago. So looks to me like the story probably is is that put a battery on it. Going to get its aunt, aunt's, Annie's old car started again. And uncle's old car started again. And went to, went to start it. And it was stuck. So the starter's going clunk, clunk, clunk. So he put another starter on it, thinking the starter was bad. And... You know, change oil and everything, and then realize that things not going to run. So, whatever. You know, that's where I come in. That's where I always come in. <laughs> so anyway, I thought I would just show it down a little bit, and I'm going to see if I can do this without creating a mess here. Oops. Go get something. Let me pause you. I'd like to add that I got a new tripod. I went to the Goodwill and picked up another tripod that. Will replace my old one. My old one was coming apart, and this one's even got the little uh, thing where you can take the camera off and on without having to unscrew it. It's missing that on the other one. Anyway, so uh, hey, this was kind of a chore getting something assembled to even get this stuff in here because and the funnel wouldn't go in there, and then the hose wouldn't go in there. So, well, okay then. So what I've come up with is, you see on the cam or not, I have a top off a gear loop container and I have a potion. And I think what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to get this down in here first. And then I'll introduce the magic potion into the cylinders via this hose. I'm going to fill it up. I don't need to. You know, everybody on the internet says it'll work. Old time remedy. So here we go. Oops, oops, oops. Wait a minute. Not yet. It's wardrobe malfunction here. Get in there. Stop fighting me. Get in there. It's over. Get in there. The time in the grave is over. All right, let's see if I can do this one. Can go in there. Maybe a little bit too much. Right. This piston's all the way up now here on this cylinder, so may not need to put much potion in it. Okay, I'll dig it up. There it comes. Magic potion. This side is the harder side to get stuff into the cylinders because you've got this manifold in the way. Because this manifold juts upward instead of downward like the other one does. Uh oh. Okay. Phew. It stinks, that's for sure. It stinks so you know it's working. Turn this the other way. I think this one at the back is pretty far up too. So. Alright, that's good. Yeah. And the thing about this is acetone evaporates quickly but it also it also uh, it doesn't like to mix with the transmission fluid normally so you have to keep shaking it I'm get a close in view closer er still don't know what this thing is I'll tell you a, uh, I'll tell you a little anecdote while we're doing this. Uh, it's not really about this car, but you're talking about that stuck old stuck olds over there. Um, hey, I didn't go very far in it. She said, uh, I priced an engine on the internet 
last night. Guess how much for a complete engine? A thousand bucks. Got a thousand bucks to buy an engine, it's not that, it's just that damn it's a lot of money. I mean you can go buy a four fifty five running four fifty five for like half that. Anybody's gonna actually say something like, "Well, you didn't have the camera inside the cylinder, so we could see the liquid going in." There it comes. Ran that one over. People say that. People complain about everything, man. Okay. So I'm gonna do these last two with you guys, and then what the hell. This engine looks like the valve covers ain't ever been off of it. And then I'm gonna take my flashlight and I'm gonna evaluate how much magic potion is in the cylinders. And then I'll mix up another batch if I need to, and then add some more. Uh oh. If this thing runs, it's gonna smoke like crazy. It may run and never quit smoking. My brother one time bought a 65 Impala that had not run in I don't know how long. It had a 327 in it. And it was a pretty car. It had been. It was a super sport. It was a, what the heck? Get in there, come on. Come on, hose. Oh, I guess the piston's all the way up. Boy, that piston is all the way up, literally. I think. Anyway, he bought that car and got it running. Finally, man, it run bad. But it was a pretty car. It was a evening orchid. Had a wide interior, bucket seats. And there's just another one like this one. Somebody had just... Parked it and let it sit. I see that all over. I don't. I don't understand the psychology of that. I really don't. I don't understand why people. Seems like some people just. You know, they have no empathy towards old cars and machinery and things like this. It's like that. All they care about is that it's there. As long as it's there, where we can see it if we look for it, then that's all we care about. Tell stories about it. You know. Maybe we'll fix it up on it. In my drives up to a town not too far from here, I had to take up this little back road and went two different round trips up this road. And the first thing I saw sitting in the weeds was a 76 Cadillac Sedan DeVille, which didn't look that bad. And then somewhere off the other side of the road, I saw it looked like a 62, 63, or 64 Chevy Impala two-door in the weeds. Cause I always look for stuff like that. Every time, you know, down here in the South, I don't, you know, I have, I say down here in the South because I've not been exposed to the Northern U.S. very much, and I don't know what you see there. You guys probably have the same stuff, but the only difference is down here in the South, a lot of this stuff tends to not rust away near as quick, and so anytime I'm going down one of these two-lane roads down here, I always look at people's houses, especially if it's kind of a crappy looking place and they got a lot of stuff sitting around, which you see that all over the place down here. But I always look to see what may be lurking in the weeds around their property because you never know. There's an impala sitting out there, so I, I file that away for future reference. So if I get in the mood to buy another car project or whatever, then I have an inventory in my head about where stuff's sitting and then I can either go up and maybe make a deal on something or just have the door slammed in my face or be told, no, not for sale, nothing's for sale. Don't come back, it's never for sale. We're gonna restore it one day. Always one day. All right guys, I'm gonna continue on a little while on my own here and uh, pop up the cylinders with the magic potion and 
uh, I'll get back to this on the weekend, hopefully, and I'll, like I said, I'll pull those valve covers off and get the thing disassembled so we can primarily focus on trying to get the crankshaft and the pistons to turn. You know how it goes on stuff like this, i just tell you now, it may be another fail. I mean, if it is, it is. We'll just have to find another engine for this thing, but uh, I don't give up quickly, so we'll try. We'll see what we got. If we can get it to turn, I think we can get it to run. So thanks for tuning in, and I'll update this just in a couple seconds.